Hi there. We've just had New Year's Eve here on the south coast of England and a fine clear night it's been too. I've got a great bell out there which came with my old pilot cutter, the 1911 Herta from the Bristol Channel. And it's got a voice like an angel. So you get eight bells for the old year and eight bells for the new. So I'm all ready to go. Uh, and I decided to have a look round at the sky because the sky was clear. There was quite a bright moon, but there was enough darkness to see the planets and the stars. And Orion was away on my right hand side, marching away to the westward, dragging his dog Sirius behind in a lovely blue bright dog star. And ahead of me, a little bit to the right, I could see what must have been a planet. It was high up in the sky and it was to the right of me. I reckon about 15 degrees to the right. My house looks out to the southeast and the due south is therefore 45 degrees on my right hand side. Uh, that makes sense, doesn't it? And you can easily subdivide 45 degrees into three, just in your mind's eye. It's an easy thing to do. You can also divide things into quarters. Beyond that, it gets difficult. But so we divided into three uh, and this planet was sitting on the first division. So it was about probably about 15 degrees to the right of where I was looking, which meant it was 30 degrees east of the meridian. Now, the meridian is the line between me and due south. It stretches from the North Pole to the South Pole and it's a great circle on the planet really but it just runs in a straight line straight down there so my position here is about one degree west of Greenwich which is where everything happens the whole of the universe according to astro navigation centers around Greenwich uh, in Greater London which fills me with delight it doesn't fill everybody with joy but it suits me well and Greenwich is to all intents and purposes, if you're looking at big numbers, pretty close to where I am. So this planet was about 30 degrees east of Greenwich at that time. It had 30 degrees to go before it hit the meridian. OK, so my position here is defined by latitude and longitude. As I say, my latitude's about one degrees west and my latitude is about 51 degrees north. So there I am, fixed on the surface of the Earth. Now then, what about the heavenly bodies? What's happening to them? How can we know where they are? Well, it's one thing to think they're proceeding in unimaginable speed at unimaginable distances. How do you pin that down? Well, with difficulty. But for the astro navigator, it's easy because we have a strange convention, us navigators. Uh, we work on the basis that the Earth, the sphere of the Earth, is the centre of the universe and that everything else is on a great big sphere which is around us, called the celestial sphere. Everything is on that sphere and everything moves around on it. The sun moves every day, so does the moon and so do the planets. And we fix their position like this. First of all, how do we fix their longitude? Well, they have latitude and longitude on the celestial sphere, just like we do, but it's not called that. It's worked out in angular distance from Greenwich and the longitude of a planet is how many degrees it is at one moment in time west of Greenwich. And it goes all the way around, starting at naught when it's on the meridian of Greenwich, and it moves all the way around till it gets to 360 when it's naught again. So that's how it works. It could be anything from naught to 360. And as it approaches the meridian, the numbers get bigger. Uh, and we're looking down on it from the North Pole and you'll see that the planet which is up there just on the right hand side at about half past one in the morning that's at 40 degrees west of the Greenwich Meridian running straight out in front of you at the pole and you're probably thinking well how can it be to the right if it's to the west? Easy mistake to make. You see most of us are looking at the earth uh, as a Mercator projection, a flat projection and if you look at it like that, you've got the British Isles and Europe at one point and you've got the Americas to the left. That's how it looks on a Mercator projection. But the celestial navigators see things differently. If you look down from the North Pole, get yourself a globe and try this. 
look down from the North Pole and you'll see that actually America is to the right of Britain after all. And so here we are. So we've got something in west longitude on the sky and it's got what's called a Greenwich hour angle of 40 degrees. So the Greenwich hour angle is how many degrees it is west of Greenwich. GHA is short for it, Greenwich hour angle 40. Uh, where our planet is is probably to the other side of the Greenwich meridian, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. Okay, moving on. What about the planet's latitude on the celestial sphere? Well, that's another thing, and that's called declination. Here's another, here's another picture. We've got our observer, and he's sitting at 40 degree, 42 degrees north latitude, uh, measured as an angle from the centre of the Earth. There he is. If our planet is right over his head, it's at 42 degrees north and it's got what it's called a declination of 42 degrees north. Declination is how far something is north or south of the celestial equator, which is an extension of the equator of the Earth carried out sideways. So it's how far it is north or south of our equator, basically. And that fixes its position. It's got declination, which is latitude, and it's got Greenwich hour angle, which is longitude. And we've got it fixed. Right. Now then, what about the planet I was looking at? Well, as I saw it, it looked as if it was about, as I say, about 30 degrees still east of Greenwich. It was still rising. So what does that mean to us? Well, here's what it means. When I'd had a look at it and had sorted out where I thought it was, I decided to identify it for sure. I would have a look in my nautical almanac. So I came inside and I came to my computer and on my computer, I have got the nautical almanac for 2025 and I've also got 2026. Uh, you can buy these, the proper nautical almanac, you buy it from the UKHO, United Kingdom Hydrographic Office, or for the American equivalent. It'll cost you about £30 sterling. If you're like me and you're not doing Astra every day, you probably don't really need to have the book. What you need is to have the information. And you can get the information for free on the internet. You can simply download it. Um, and here is the site that you can get it from. So I go into my nautical almanac. And what do I see? Well, the first thing I see is the cover. I just love that, don't you? This is, sums it all up, doesn't it? We've got a proper couple of proper sailor men there shooting the sun, probably, because it seems to be the day. It's an awful day and they've got all their kit on. I love that. That gives you the idea, doesn't it? But what we want is the daily page for the 31st for New Year's Eve. So we pull it up and here it is. We've got Three days on this page, December the 30th, 31st and the 1st of January and the next year. And you see that as you go across the top, it's got a thing called Aries, which we're not interested in. That's to do with star navigation. And then we've got four planets, Venus, Mars, Saturn and Jupiter. And those are the ones we can actually see with our naked eye comfortably. And they are tabulated in the nautical almanac so that we know where they are at any given moment and we can see whether we can shoot them with our sextant to get an accurate position line or not. Well right now we're not interested in super accuracy we're talking about 15 degree intervals we just want to have a basic idea of what's going to be visible so let's have a look at Jupiter. Here's Jupiter on Wednesday the 31st of December 2025 and if you look across at the 23 2300 we see this Greenwich hour angle is 332 degrees it's also 33 degrees 332 degrees 29.5 but we're not interested in all that 330 is close enough because 330 is 30 degrees east of the meridian so it's actually 15 degrees to the meridian side of where I'm looking, which is to my right. So that is 330 degrees. So that indicates that the planet I'm seeing has got to be Jupiter. But we'll just check what its declination is. And its declination is north, very nearly north 22 degrees. And planets 
get higher than that, but not very often. That's very high for a planet. It's 22, 22 degrees north of the equator. And I'm at 50 degrees. So if I'm looking up, it's going to be way high in the sky, isn't it? So there it is. Had to be Jupiter. The colour was right too, actually. It was sort of orangey. Bit of tan in it, maybe. So I've identified Jupiter. All is well. There he is, floating in the heavens. Unimaginably far away from us. But we know it's him, floating in the darkness out there. Man is not lost.